So when Geometry Notes for Blender first came out, it was easy to see the potential, but maybe not to visualize exactly what it could do. However, there's a new Geometry Node setup that's just come out that can really give us an idea of what the future of 3D modeling in Blender is. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Buildify is a brand new Geometry Node setup from Pavel Oliva. Um, and I apologize if I said that wrong, so this geometry node library is basically designed to make creation of buildings easy using geometry nodes. And so it's got a fairly simplified geometry node setup that's designed to help us quickly generate buildings. So I want to get into it and talk a little bit about how to use it. And then we may talk about this more in the future because this one is just going to be massive. Um, one big thing about this is you can download this for free by typing in a value of zero dollars, or you can make a donation to the developer by putting in a value of what you think Think it's a fair price. So I always do encourage you to do that to support developers where you can when they're creating cool tools like this. But basically the way that this works is um, this is a geometry node setup that you bring into Blender. And so when you open it up, it's going to look something like this. And so when you first open it up, it's just gonna have this example file in here. I'm gonna tap the Z key and go into material preview mode. And so there's a couple cool things about this. So the first is you can edit things like the height of your buildings by adjusting your geometry node setup over here. And it's really simplified. It's not designed to be super complicated. It's really driven by the shape of the faces that are generated in here. So if I toggle this off, right, and then tab into edit mode, notice what it's doing is it's basically using the faces um, of this uh, base right here in order to generate our building. So let's say that we were to take this edge, right, and extrude it out like this. And we could probably toggle this on and do like the wireframe modifier so you can see what it's doing. But if I extrude this out, notice how it's generating additional pieces of the building whenever I do this. So if I extrude it this way, um, it's extruding more of the building along the shape. So if I go back into material preview mode, notice how it's a really fast um, way to generate a building right here. And all of those uh, all of those floors are going to adjust modularly whenever I do this. So we can use this in order to really quickly generate buildings. And then it does really interesting things if you edit the shape as well. So if we go back into wireframe mode, and let's say that we were to maybe like scale this down or something like that. Notice how it's adjusting to actually fit the pieces in here like this. So if we go back to material preview mode, scale it up or down, notice how this is um, definitely adjusting to follow along with that. And so note that you can come in here and adjust things like your wall props. So you can adjust the seed and other things like that inside of the geometry node setup right here. So notice how I can adjust the seed. You can also adjust the seed of the um, pieces that are placed on like the base or something like that. Um, so it's really simple to use. And then let's say we wanted to create another shape right? So I'm just going to add my 3D cursor over here. I'm going to do a shift A and I'm just going to add a plane just at the moment right here. Well, what we could do is we could just add that same geometry nodes modifier. So we're just going to go into geometry nodes, add a geometry node setup. And in this case, we're going to select the option for our building, right? And there you are. It's generated a building based on that new shape. So um, adding this to new shapes is really easy. And then let's take a look at the way that the buildings are kind of set up. And we may do a separate video on this, um, but you can see how basically it's just uh, putting together different parts and pieces um, on kind of a grid wherever your shape is um, based on the height of the building. But let's say we were to toggle this off for a second and look at the assets that come with this. So right now it only comes with these assets, right? But it comes with like a wall, um, a couple different walls, as well as um, some base pieces. And then it's got your uh, sign and your other things that are gonna go along with that. So it's basically just got all of these modules. And if you look at the modules, they're actually placed inside of different collections, right? So if you look at this over here on the right-hand side, you've got your different modules in here for your different floors and walls. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to duplicate this, move it over like this, and we wanna make sure that this duplicated piece, there we go is right here, but let's say we were to adjust the color of this one somehow. So let's just take a couple of these faces just for the sake of what we're doing here and adjust them. So I'm just going to add a new material and we'll just make it kind of a red. So something like this, nothing complicated. And we'll just assign that to these surfaces just so you can see that it's different, right? So remember that this new piece is inside of my ground floor walls right here. Well, now if I toggle my building back on, since that's actually inside 
of the collection that this is using, like this. Notice how that's randomly being placed in here as well. So it's really as simple as just adding the modular parts and pieces in here um, in order to generate your building. And then if you don't like the way that this looks, you can just jump into um, you can just jump into that node setup and for the ground floor, you could adjust the seed, right? And so that's gonna adjust your randomization. So it really is as simple as taking those parts and pieces and plugging them in. So one thing that the, uh, one thing that the author notes is you can take uh, the modular parts from like mega scans or something like that and put those in as well. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know. We can talk about how to do that. Um, there are some licensing things you need to be aware of with mega scans, which I don't wanna get into right now, but you can take these modular pieces or really any modular pieces and plug them in so and so that right there is plenty but now I want to get into one of the major features that comes along with this that could really be a game changer all right and so the massive feature for this add-on is that it actually integrates with the open street map add-on. So we've talked about the OpenStreetMap add-on in the past. Um, so basically it's an add-on that allows you to import map data and generate buildings inside of Blender. Um, and the one limitation of this is it hasn't really always given you the ability to create very good looking buildings, right? If you look at these buildings, like they're fine um, if you're just trying to fill in the background, but I mean, there's no trim on them. The windows just kind of get cut off, um, even with the premium version, um, other things like that. But I mean, it's still a great tool to bring in geographical data and set up cities, right? Well, what this does is this will actually take that geographical data and it'll build buildings based on that. All right, so this is ridiculously cool. So what you can do is um, you have to install the OpenStreetMap add-on, which I can link to a video where we talked about how to do that. When you install the OpenStreetMap add-on, basically what you wanna do is you wanna select your location, which you can use with the select tool. Um, and then when you import this, what you wanna do is you wanna set your import to be 2D right here, that's just gonna bring in your two-dimensional information, right? Buildings and water and other things like that. Um, and then, though, you wanna find that Buildify um, Blender file that comes along with this. So you just wanna find the Buildify file that comes along with this, you wanna click on Accept, and what you wanna do is you wanna click the drop-down and notice how now it finds different things in here that are contained in that file. Well, specifically, we wanna bring in the building setup like this. So what that's gonna do, and I'm gonna click on import and let this work a little bit, that's gonna import your OpenStreetMap data into your Blender file, but then it's going to apply the buildings from the geometry node setup specifically to the buildings that are brought in from OpenStreetMap. So basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna automatically generate geometry nodes buildings on top of the um, building data that gets brought in. And so now you've got like a complete geometry node building set up in here that's setting up these buildings automatically. And then you could jump into like the geometry node settings right here if you wanted to do that, do some randomization. So if we were to select this and let's say we don't like the way the ground floor on these looks, right? Um, you could definitely randomize these as well. So if I go to material preview mode right here, then I adjust the seed Notice how the bottoms of these buildings are all adjusting in here. So you can do the same thing with your other walls as well. So set our seed to like 500 and it's going to adjust all of these different walls. So obviously these all look kind of uniform because they've all got kind of the same, um, they've all got the same like four pieces that this is using in order to build these. But if you were to build this out, this could be a massively cool tool for generating cities inside of Blender. So I'm actually already seeing people using this um, in order to generate cities for like game engines and other things like that. So this is just another example of how exciting Geometry Nodes is. I'm gonna link to some other Geometry Nodes setup um, videos on this page as well. Love to hear from you in the comments down below. Do you see yourself using this? Do you wanna see more tutorials? Just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.